So I've finally been blessed with the version 28 update on my Quest 2, and with it arrives a number of additions including Airlink, which allows you to wirelessly stream PC VR content over local network to your Quest 2. There have been a number of ways to do the same thing in the past, but the predominant way has been through virtual desktop. In this video I'll give a few of my initial thoughts on Airlink, how it compares to virtual desktop, and run through a few of the numbers in terms of latency to give an idea of what you might expect from a similar setup. With that, let's take a look. Immersed Robot Hello everybody, welcome to Immerse Robot again, and in this video I'll be taking a look at Airlink, the new addition to version 28 on the Quest 2. So I'll be showing some side-by-side -side comparisons with Virtual Desktop, the previous way that you could stream wirelessly to your Quest 2 from your PC, and I'll give some initial impressions. This is very first impressions for me, this is not a full test or me trying to give any guidance on how you should set up things or anything like that, it's just me sort of showing you how it performs in general and also uh, with contrast to virtual desktop. Um, I've set things up as closely as possible in most ways so I'm running both systems will be running in 90 Hertz and I've locked the bitrate uh, to 90 megabits per second as well just to keep everything locked in from that point of view. Now there is video buffering in virtual desktop which I haven't initially included in this side-by-side -side comparison although I do include it a little bit later on um, in certain titles and the reason I do that is because it does help smooth things out and that comes into play a little bit when comparing it to Airlink which is overall generally a little bit smoother um, but we can get into that in a little bit more detail in a moment. Um, I've also set things on high graphical quality in virtual desktop and this can play a, a role as well although I did go on the recommendation from the app itself with regards to the GPU I have it does recommend having high graphical quality but um, it does play a role in certain titles and again I'll get into that towards the end of this video. I am showing the latency on screen in both Airlink and in Virtual Desktop. Now the way these overlays work I've, I'm not exactly sure how each one calculates latency perfectly. I know that the on the Oculus side of things the motion to photon latency, the, the app tracking to mid photon latency, that is basically how fast it updates the screen in your VR display based on the tracking movements that you make in real life um, and I don't know how that how virtual desktop calculates latency exactly there might be some differences between them I'm sure there are small differences so that plays a part you probably can't go exactly on what is being shown here in terms of what is being reported by the uh, performance monitoring software on each setup um, it's just something to keep in mind but it can certainly give some guidance I will also at the end of this video get on to the a comparison between AC Wi-Fi, the old standard, and AX Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi 6. Um, I've, I've tried it on both types of router in order to get some kind of idea on how each one will perform and the differences in performance if you've not got a Wi-Fi 6 router. But initially uh, the first few comparisons that I make will be made with Wi-Fi 6 so you can check that out. Just quickly before I get into it as well, the video quality on the footage I show here is not ideal but um, I'm recording things through the Quest in a certain way where it will show the overlay and I could have you know, increased recording quality on the Quest 2 but at the risk of having performance hits and I didn't want to mess around with those as it could affect the uh, what I'm showing on screen in terms of latency and performance. I wasn't too sure about that so I decided just to play it safe really. Um, so that's why the video quality isn't great, I apologise for that um, but it is what it is and I will be commenting throughout this video so even if you can't can't see the numbers too clearly hopefully uh, my commentary will give you some guidance anyway so with that that's enough of me rambling on let's get into it okay so I started out with Asgard's Wrath you can see Airlink over on the left side of the screen and virtual desktop on the right and I'm looking at these two overlays here in front of me and you can see that the app tracking to mid photon latency on the Airlink side of things is running around sort of between sort of 45 to 55 milliseconds and then the 
latency on the virtual desktop side is running around sort of 35 to 40 milliseconds usually. Um, so you're seeing some discrepancy here in terms of latency from these two systems, these two different methods of running wireless VR on the Quest. And overall, we will see this going forward. The virtual desktop will in general have lower latency, um, whereas Air Link, I will say the feeling of using Air Link is a little bit more of a smoother experience. Now, this is due to a number of factors probably not least being ASW asynchronous space warp which will help smooth things over on the Airlink side unfortunately that's not available on the virtual desktop side and um, there is also a setting which I'll get into later on on virtual desktop called video buffering uh, which Airlink might have built in I'm not sure I assume it has um, which helps out with uh, you know smoothing out those stutters and things like that that you will see here and there in virtual desktop but the experience in both on Asgard's Wrath was was really good on this uh, Wi-Fi 6 router and um, there was certainly stuttering and um, but I should quickly mention as well some of the harsh stutters that you'll see in this video are probably more down to the recording than the actual in-game stuttering that you'll see from time to time which are more subtle in all honesty. Okay, moving on to No Man's Sky. Same again, really. If you look at the difference in latency on both sides, you'll see that there is uh, more latency on the Air Link side of things. And again, I think in this game in particular, it was slightly smoother on the Air Link than it was on Virtual Desktop with the settings that I have in place. And that's a big caveat, you know, there's a lot of settings in Virtual Desktop to get into, and I'm just using this video as my initial impressions. I'm sure there are ways to smooth out virtual desktop but it should be stated as well that the games that I'm running here are very demanding games and this will play a part in terms of latency so what you're seeing here is the latency from these types of games Asgard's Wrath, No Man's Sky for example whereas if you tried lower demanding games then you will probably see less latency because the encoding for the video which is sent over wireless to the Quest 2 is encoded by the GPU and so it puts extra strain on the GPU and that can cause uh, issues it takes more time to uh, compress the video and, and send it over so that can cause issues with latency on more demanding games but these are the sort of extremes that I wanted to look at in this video anyway and it's interesting to see the results but the latency on virtual desktop is still running lower So here I decided to switch on video buffering on virtual desktop and you can see that it doesn't affect latency as much as I was expecting honestly um, and it probably helped smooth things out very slightly but there wasn't a big difference, it wasn't a night and day difference in No Man's Sky at least but it might certainly make a difference. Okay, and in this final quick test, I decided to look at Half-Life Alex, and the stuttering in virtual desktop on the default settings that I have mentioned before is um, quite jarring compared to Air Link. It is a smoother experience in Air Link, even though the latency is lower in virtual desktop. And the, the other thing to mention is when testing these games here, I was running graphical quality on high in virtual desktop, so that made a difference and you'll see that in a second when I change that but the just with this initial take it was more like the the stuttering was far more prevalent on virtual desktop in this particular game which was more noticeable than something like Asgard's Wrath for example there was still stuttering on Air Link so I shouldn't say that it was completely smooth but um, it was a smoother experience than virtual desktop so here I decided to turn on video buffering like in the last video and that did help actually in Half-Life Alex. I did notice a difference um, and again latency wasn't too affected by adding that in um, but then when I lowered graphical quality in virtual desktop down to medium rather than high I noticed a big difference. It was much smoother and I was running at a pretty constant 90 FPS at that point. There was still stuttering. I did notice stuttering here and there but um, it was a much better experience. Of course visual quality was slightly down and probably more on par, more in parity with uh, Air Link at that point but I did notice that it wasn't quite as sharp as on those high quality settings. Mm -hmm. 
So just to finish off here, I decided to test Airlink over AX Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi 6 router and uh, AC Wi-Fi router just to see the difference. And just looking at the numbers just straight away here, it looks like you're getting around 7 to 10 milliseconds lower latency on the Wi-Fi 6 router than you are on the more bog standard router. And you know, they're both running at 5 gigahertz, but the Wi-Fi 6 does help. And I will say that in Asgard's Wrath in this particular section where you well I was sort of the giant looking out over the landscape it looked like the stuttering was far more prevalent in the AC Wi-Fi than it was in the AX Wi-Fi so um, it does give a, a better overall experience And then in No Man's Sky, uh, the same thing really. You're looking at a similar amount of difference between the latency in these two methods. And again, it, it sort of results in, in the headset, you'll see more stuttering in this kind of stuff really. That's the, the end result of it. So it can play quite a big difference in the overall experience, depending on how sensitive you are to these micro stutters and those kinds of things really. But I'm sure there are ways to mitigate these things on both sides and perhaps get your router running things a little bit better if you you change a few settings and perhaps even get a dedicated router as well um, in order to run this stuff that will help so it's not managing any extra traffic on the network um, it's just dedicated to providing wireless VR to your Quest 2 um, but yeah it's interesting to look at this comparison anyway Okay, just some final thoughts on this initial look at Airlink from me. Overall, I would say that in most of the applications I tried, I would say that Airlink feels a little bit of a smoother experience overall than virtual desktop. However, it does come at the sacrifice of perhaps a very slight amount of noticeable latency and also visual quality as well. Visual quality looked a little bit lower in Airlink than virtual desktop, but probably not enough to really worry about overall. Virtual desktop, on the other hand, it does feel like it has slightly lower lower latency and better visual quality on those high graphical settings but this comes at the sacrifice of some stuttering here and there now you can mitigate that by adding in this uh, video buffering option and also reducing your graphical quality within virtual desktop down to perhaps medium settings um, but you will notice a hit in visuals in there that's something that um, I noticed immediately things don't look as sharp but perhaps they are more in parity with the sort of standard settings within in Airlink where you don't have too much control over those those finer settings really and that's something else to mention you know with this initial look I'm just looking at a few of the things that jumped out to me but when you really dive into this there are so many things that you can look into if I was to make a two-hour video on this initial look it would be looking at the different refresh rates so you can set Airlink at 72 80 or 90 Hertz I just stuck with 90 Hertz for the purposes of this test and I also made sure that virtual desktop was running at 90 frames per second as well just to keep some parity there um, but of course if I was to do a more thorough test then I would try each refresh rate on both systems and just to see how that affected latency overall how it affected uh, perceived performance and that kind of stuff a lot of the times you know if you're not running with a performance overlay within either Airlink or virtual desktop the experience is actually surprisingly good and I've used virtual desktop for months now and I really, really do enjoy my experience in there. It will never be a replacement at this stage for you know a, a true PC VR wired headset, unfortunately, um, because for the types of experiences that I like to play, I, I just like that visual fidelity, that lack of latency on that side of things. But that's not to say that there's not a place for this as well, because I find myself often playing uh, my Quest 2 in my living room, streaming PC VR No Man's Sky, for example, over while I play with my son in the same room while he plays on PS4 we can sort of join in the same game together and play a bit of No Man's Sky um, and I enjoy doing that for what it is but if I'm being honest my preferable way of playing No Man's Sky is still of course PC VR even though it comes at the sacrifice of that wire so it's different things really a lot of people might prefer that other people might prefer the wireless no matter what even with the slight latency increase and the visual quality downgrade they might take that just so they don't have to put up with a wire 
it. So it's different for everybody, I'm sure, with regards to that. But I'll wrap this video up now um, because I have been going on a little bit longer than I expected. But this is interesting me enough where I'm thinking I might try to refine some of the settings in virtual desktop, look into Airlink a little bit more and maybe make a few more videos once I've had more experience with it. But we'll see that. I don't want to make any promises for any future videos at this point, but we'll see how that goes and I'll report back. But anyway, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Please consider picking up my science fiction virtual reality focused novel, The Memory Engine, a light-hearted tongue-in-cheek adventure through the metaverse, available on Amazon Kindle, paperback, and as an audible audiobook. Links in the description to this video.